Just like people all over the world, Australians have their share of dreams for the future. Most hope to one day own their own home or take an overseas vacation. Many fantasize about their football team capturing a championship flag. And virtually everyone of winning the lottery. Australia likes to refer to itself as the lucky country. And there's this prevailing positive attitude that says dreams can come true. Daphne and I returned to Australia in 1996, it was with a dream. To establish a Wesleyan church in Adelaide that would primarily minister to people with little or no church background. Our aspiration was similar to the Apostle Paul, to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that those who have not heard would understand. With the help of a young Australian couple, we set up an office in the suburb of Golden Grove and began a community survey to discover local needs and heighten awareness of the new church. We made contact with a couple of local families that had been involved in the past with Wesleyan churches and they seemed pretty keen to join us in the church plant. With the impending arrival of our son Will and his wife Janice, it looked like we had a core group of 10 adults and three children. We were ready to fly, but then the bottom began to fall out of our dream. The arrival of our son and daughter was delayed by visa problems. In the meantime, our two local families moved from the area. The door knocking was a physically taxing and emotionally draining experience. The thing that drove me with the surveying was knowing that my mom and dad had moved to the city and weren't, they grew up with Christian moms and their dads weren't Christians. And they got married and moved to the city and they had done very much what the people that we surveyed had done just hadn't followed God at all. And my dad had been off in the war and he said that he just came back, I guess with lots of emotions that he didn't know he'd had before. And so they just walked away from God and the reason they came back to the church was because somebody knocked on their door. and so. When I found it really hard, that was what kept me going. The whole process of connecting with the community was taking a lot longer than we'd anticipated. We were fearful at times that the dream was turning into a nightmare. But with the help of God, dreams do come true. Our community survey revealed that nine out of 10 families in our suburb had no church affiliation. Although half the homes we visited were not interested in participating in the survey, 50% of those who did requested more information on the new church. We followed up these 190 families with a series of mailings, introducing them to our vision, our dream for this new church. I suppose over years I've developed not a disdain, but a bit of a, um, a dislike uh, to traditional type methods, uh, mainly because it didn't really apply the, what I thought to be the teachings of, of Jesus to, um, and the New Testament in, in particular, to real day 20th century life. And, uh, and the approach that, um, that Bill and Daphne were taking certainly seemed to fill that bill. So that immediately uh, got my attention, also got Jane's attention. She wasn't there at the time, but I told her about it. And from there, we decided to, um, to give it a go. On August 4th, 1996, 40 individuals attended our inaugural service, including 23 people who had no church connection. Within two months, we established a music ministry team and began to develop a drama group. Will and Janice, my son and daughter-in-law, finally arrived from the U.S. providing fresh ideas, new resources, and much needed manpower. Soon the children's ministry began to blossom and a youth group was launched. The dream was finally becoming a reality. I like the fact that it's not at all pretentious. I've been to a lot of churches before where um, a lot of people seem to be there because they've chosen that as their lifestyle and so they're all running around being terribly good Christians and all that kind of stuff and 
not showing anyone their real side. Um, I think that's the thing that really annoys me most about a lot of places it's, uh, and a lot of people is that they, they're too scared to be real people. So, and that's one of the things I like is the fact that it's all real people and you can see that nobody's hiding um, their dark side or anything like that, all quite honest and open and yeah I like that. And also as I said before the practical teaching. The only problem was the reality of starting a church with people who hadn't been attending church for years was a little too real. Most of the adults were hesitant to be actively involved in church. If we tried singing a song, hardly anybody would sing. If we wanted to have a scripture reading, we had to put the Bible verse on an overhead uh, projector screen because nobody carried a Bible. If we called for volunteers, hardly anybody would respond. And their children, it was scary how little they knew. Most of them had no concept of God, let alone a knowledge of who Jesus Christ was. We were breaking new ground and it was both exciting and frightening. As the months passed, people came to know Jesus in a personal way. Others who had once been close to the Lord began the process of coming back to Him. Yeah, I guess what I'm thinking of at the moment is that uh, Jesus means to me that I've got a second chance in life and um, He gave me a second chance and my life was going down the gurgler without Him. And uh, I just thank Him for that. Um, he's blessed me so much. I've given away a job to do part-time ministry and he's blessed our family. He's provided us with everything we need and uh, more actually. And I just want to thank him for that. He just means everything to me. Well, he means um, my salvation to me and he means um, my relationship with the Father, God, and um, a life of peace and love as a result and uh, security in him um, and he's led us here to Village Community Church we've only been there about six months oh it'll be longer than that now eight months or so and um, um, God is blessing us through that soon children were learning spiritual truths not only through the Sunday school but from their parents as God continued to draw additional families into our fellowship, it became increasingly apparent the dream was coming true. So I started going along to Village Community Church and I guess my spiritual life is sky high. Uh, yeah. Almost like climbing, eh? Yeah, <laughs> like rock climbing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, young Jason who has been here the last four weeks. It's good. I, I just found out today that his mum and dad and been to church for a long, long time, and yeah. they came last um, last week. So, and that's the sort of thing. I mean, without you know looking for scouts, <laughs> so to speak, you know, we've never met them. But their the son who had been for four weeks previous brought them along, and you know, so it's, it's great. So. I sort of pictured it as God having like this great big heart, and in each and in this heart there was a spot for everybody, and nobody else could ever fill someone else's spot which meant that if you weren't in your spot, that spot ached. And that's the way I sort of pictured it, and that sort of, it suddenly clicked, I understood. As of September 1999, an average of 70 people are attending a church each Sunday that didn't even exist three years ago. They're being pastored by a young Australian couple who weren't even in the ministry three years ago. The church is being led by an enthusiastic team of lay people, many of whom weren't in a vital personal relationship with the Lord prior to 1996. Dreams do come true. My philosophy is if you can find somebody else who is looking for a ministry and is capable of doing it or can be trained to do it, then train them and set them free to do it. Our church is growing and I want you to know that I'm committed to the growth of this church, to see this church grow into a church that reaches out into the Golden Grove community, a church that ministers to its own congregation and a church that glorifies God. 
While writing to the Ephesian church, Paul once burst out in praise. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that's at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen.